Every child requires iron to support normal growth and development. Hi, I'm Dr. Tyson Akano with the Pediatric Hematology Curbside from the Center for Cancer and Blood Disorders at the Children's Hospital, Colorado. Before we jump into treating iron deficiency anemia, jumping right to that perfect clinical band-aid, let's quickly review the burdens of iron supply and demand because our hope is that your evaluation will focus on identifying the underlying cause of iron deficiency anemia, and that'll help guide therapy. Now, our bodies can't make iron, so the cause of iron deficiency anemia is often found within the iron pathway. First, iron must be eaten in adequate supply. Second, it has to be absorbed through the intestines appropriately. Third, it should be stored and utilized by the body and fourth, it can't be lost through excessive blood loss. Increasing demands for iron are based on the body's need to oxygenate tissues, keep up with red cell turnover, and to keep up with blood loss, hemorrhage. So it's no wonder that the two most prevalent populations that present with iron deficiency anemia are the developing infants and toddlers and our adolescents, both with increased demands, undergoing rapid growth, brain development, and in the case of the adolescent female, the onset of menarche and the challenge of blood loss. Without iron, one is missing a vital ingredient in the recipe to make hemoglobin in red blood cells. And the marrow produces smaller and less quantity of red blood cells. This is unlike inherited thalassemias, a quantitative disorder of red cell hemoglobin synthesis that in severe forms presents with transfusion dependence, but inherited as a heterozygous trait is often a benign microcytic anemia. In this case, the red blood cells are produced in great number to compensate for the markedly smaller sized red blood cells. And red blood cell morphology demonstrates target cells and basophilic stippling. No single test defines iron deficiency anemia. Balancing the clinical history exam with a CBC, an iron profile, and a review of the peripheral smear can help you be more confident with your diagnosis. Within the CBC, the RBC, red blood cell count, can help you differentiate thal trait and iron deficiency anemia. With iron deficiency anemia, the RBC decreases concurrently with the decreased hemoglobin and MCV. However, in thal trait, the RBC increases as the hemoglobin and MCV decrease. This was the basis of an old hematology tool called the Menser Index, which is calculated by the MCV divided by the RBC. If less than 13, thal trait is said to be more likely. If greater than 13, iron deficiency anemia is said to be more likely. When treating nutritional iron deficiency anemia, pediatricians and parents struggle with the challenging love-hate relationship with oral ferrous sulfate. After all, oral iron therapy at a dose of 6 mg per kilogram elemental iron divided BID remains a standard of care to treat iron deficiency anemia in children. When faced with poor compliance, a practical first move could be to consider an alternative source of iron, now that polysaccharide irons and carbonyl irons are more widely available, and they're marketed for less GI side effects, better taste, and they're available in liquid, uh, tablet, and chewable form, and it should help improve compliance. But perhaps this digression on the Band-Aid that is oral iron therapy is missing the point altogether. Remember, we should focus our efforts, our evaluation, on the underlying cause of iron deficiency anemia. And where that may be obvious in the case of the milk baby and toddler or the menstruating adolescent, it's never normal in a six or eight year old. It's never normal in an adolescent male. And in all these cases, these other cases, it's imperative to not only consider nutritional deficiency, but the possible lack of intestinal absorption, the rare but possible inability to utilize iron, or the presence of acute or chronic blood loss. Solving and correcting the cause of iron deficiency anemia is the primary question we should ask. I'll end with a message about our favorite milk babies and toddlers. Despite being a great source of calcium and vitamin D, there is virtually no iron in cow's milk. We can first adjust their diet, encourage an iron-rich diet, but don't underestimate the impact of general pediatrics weaning off the bottle in a toddler. The simple move of transitioning from a bottle to a cup dramatically cuts the dairy intake. 
This is not simply because the kid's cup can't physically hold the same amount of milk, but because it's forcing providers and parents to work on behavioral changes, encouraging self-soothing. So mastering the art of healing uh, the iron deficiency anemia child or milk baby requires comprehensive general pediatrics. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends screening all infants for iron deficiency anemia at approximately one year of age. And they've called attention to high risk factors, including premature infants and infants that are solely breastfed. If families haven't introduced iron rich solids or fortified cereals, solely breastfed infants can be evaluated as early as four months of age. And as a pediatric community, we have a message for you milk toddlers out there. We're coming for your bottles and returning excessive cow's milk intake to where it rightfully belongs, baby cows.